Hey, my name is Emilio from Digital Byte Computing. Here we are logged into our computer on my Mac here, connected to my Synology DS920 Plus NAS. And we're gonna go through the steps on how to create a volume and a storage pool uh, from scratch on a potentially a brand new NAS, or you wanna just add a brand new volume or storage pool. We're also gonna be looking briefly at the different sorts of RAID options that are, that are available from traditional RAID, as well as your Synology RAID uh, that comes part of the Synology packages. Before we go into that, please, right up above, click on that button, clicking on the bell there to be kept up to date with all of my videos by subscribing to my channel. All right, so we are logged in. Let's just go into it. We're gonna log in with our administrator. You need to log in with an account that has sufficient privileges to be able to do what it needs to do. So generally the administrator will have all the rights. So get that logged in that way. You're presented with your standard view right here. Now in my case, this is a brand new Synology NAS. There's nothing on it at all. So it's gonna be very easy because all the disks are available. You may have just added more disks into your array. This particular uh, NAS is a four bay NAS, but the process is the same if you've got an eight, a 16, 32. If you've got very large scale NASs as well, the process is really the same. You may add additional trays to it, and then you wanna create a new volume or a new storage pool, exactly the same process. At the very top left-hand corner, we've got our main menu, essentially our start menu on our Synology NAS. And in here, we wanna select Storage Manager. Storage Manager is where you configure all of your uh, disks, really, the management of, your, of all of your disks. Under here, you've got an overview. Now, at the moment, you'll see that I've got four unused drives. Uh, they're not used at all. They're not allocated to anything. There is currently no volumes, no storage pools. In your case, you may already have some volumes. You may have some storage pools. And then you've got drives that are in use and potentially a whole bunch which are unused and you wanna allocate these unused ones, okay? Whatever the scenario is. Volumes is a summary of your volumes. If you've got some, I don't have any. Storage pools, your storage pools, I don't have any. And a summary here of my hard drives, my HDDs and my solid state SSDs. Four drives, which are currently three terabytes each. There's an overview here around hot spares if you wanna utilize hot spares and SSD cache as well. If you're utilizing SSD uh, storage, really that is purposeful for cache and for speeding up uh, read write access to your NAS. First thing you wanna do is go into the volumes section right here and select on create. Now there's a couple of options here. You've got quick and custom. Quick is it's gonna use essentially a Synology hybrid RAID volume. Custom, you can go and customize your RAID based on traditional RAID methods. Now, we're gonna to touch on this very, very briefly. Essentially, you've got your traditional RAIDs. You've got your RAID 0, you've got your RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10. They all have different pros and cons. Striping them together, mirroring, you've got parity bits, you've got all these sort of different options. Different sorts of setups will require different sorts of RAIDs and different RAIDs are better than others for different sorts of um, data, for example. So database data, you know, you wanna perhaps use a RAID 10 for everyday data, maybe a RAID 5 or a 6 for operating systems, you may wanna use something like a RAID 0. So there's different, different options, right? We're now gonna focus on a little bit more around Synology's hybrid RAID, SHR RAID, which essentially it's Synology's uh, version of RAID that provides a lot more flexibility. In traditional RAIDs, um, once you've built your RAID, let's say you've built your RAID 5, you've got your four disks in a RAID 5, you've built them, they are now stuck. They're the four drives that you need to use as part of your RAID 5. In my case, they're all three terabyte drives. In a RAID 5, one, two, three of them really is gonna give me six terabytes of storage while one worth of data is now spread over parity across those four disks. So, uh, and then I'm stuck with that. I'm now stuck with those uh, four drives totaling nine terabytes of storage. So in two, three years time, I've now filled up all my storage. I wanna buy a four terabyte or an eight terabyte drive because the price has gone down. You can now afford bigger drives. Hooray, you got a problem. You can't put it in. You can't put it in because you can't mix and match uh, the, 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 the sizes. Once you've built the RAID, you're stuck with it. That's one of the benefits of the Synology RAID, the SHR. Uh, you essentially um, can build your RAID using Synology's RAID technology for three terabyte drives Two years time, you're like, I need more. I need more storage. Or one of my drives has failed. I take out one of my three terabytes. I put in a six terabyte drive. I now have still nine terabytes of storage 
the, the generally the larger drive will be used for um will be the, the one that will be essentially the spare using for parity and things like that. So you're not going to get additional storage yet. Then you lose another drive or you want to upgrade another drive. You add a second six terabyte. Now all of a sudden your RAID has grown because now you've got two. It's not going to use the largest one as its main as its main drive for parity. Then you can literally start upgrading your NAS slowly with six terabyte drives until eventually all your four drives have been upgraded to six. You haven't lost any data. You haven't had to do anything. You haven't had to migrate all your data off to another location, migrate everything back. It's all done automatically for you. So let's look at the original three that we've got. Original three, three terabyte drives. And then our fourth being the six terabyte, you just thrown it in. It builds your whole RAID again with that six terabytes without losing any data. You take another three, put another six in, it then rebuilds it. Very, very easy. Um, so that's an awesome, awesome technology and saves you a lot of headache down the track. Now we're gonna use that on here, the Synology Hybrid RAID, because I think it's brilliant. I think it's excellent. I don't know why other vendors um, aren't using a similar technology. Some are, I know QNAP and, and a few others are looking at something similar or they have a different name, um, but it's brilliant. Traditional RAIDs are great too, if you're confident that that's what you want to use forever. If you want to have flexibility, go with the Synology Hybrid RAID, okay? Bit of a spiel, but let's continue. So we're gonna select quick. We're going to now give it a name. So what do we wanna call the storage pool? I'm gonna call it Aguero pool. RAID type, okay, SHR, SHR2. Essentially SHR is one disk, SHR2 is two disks. Next. What drives do we want to be part of it? Now you don't have to add all of your drives. If you've got more than, in my case, I've got four drives because that's all the capacity on my NAS. So I'm going to be building one volume, one storage pool with all of my drives. You can do that. If you have multiple and you, you may have eight drives listed, you only select the ones that you want as part of this new um, Synology hybrid RAID configuration. I'm going to select all four and say next. All data will be erased. Yay, all data is going to be gone. Don't click OK if you've got data on there that you need that you can't lose. Okay, make sure that all your data is gone before you do. Uh, all your data is backed up or migrated or whatever uh, before you go and do that. Okay, what sort of um, file system do you want to use? So think about NTFS, think about FAT32. These are file systems for your Synology NAS products. First one lets you use take advantage of things like snapshots, replication, shared folder quotas, things like that. EXT4 used very heavily in the Linux operating space. We're gonna stick with uh, the first option because I like being able to do snapshots and replicate my data and do other things that uh, are really cool. Bit of a summary of what's going on here. And if you're happy with everything here, you can click on apply, giving you a little indication that my total capacity will be 8.17 terabytes, apply. So that volume is now being created. Uh, it will take a little bit of time uh, you have to consider that there's now a lot of stuff that needs to be configured on the back end of all of your disks uh, to make sure that they're configured and they're all available in this one unit. Uh, so that will take a bit of time. At the same time, under storage pool, you'll see that that is now being configured at the same time. So really by creating my volume, I've created my storage pool as well. Parity consistency check is currently running on storage pool one and may affect overall system performance. So now the, the volume is ready, it's created you can really go and start to use it right now. You can go and create um, your shares and your files and your folders and go navigate to that particular volume, but it will be at a reduced capacity. So just considering that, this is all now ready to go. Okay, I've got a volume one. Um, that's it from that perspective. Now really your next step is now you can start creating stuff um, within, these particular, within this particular volume. So if you go back into control panel, go into shared folder, I can now create a new shared folder, call it data. This is all my data. Volume, there it is. That's the volume that we just created. So that wouldn't be there if the volume didn't exist. Uh, do we want to enable recycle bin? I don't want to use that. Next, you can do things like encryption on that drive. You can do the quotas. We're going to leave all that default and we're going to say apply. Who do we want to get access to it? So when you connect to this particular um, share from your network, say from a Windows, from a Mac, um, from a VMware environment, whatever it may be. What are the credentials you, 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 that you need to input to be able to connect to this particular uh, shared folder? I'm gonna connect with my admin. It needs to be read-write because I wanna be able to write to it, not just read to it. Say okay, and that is now created. So if I go into file station, which is my Windows Explorer equivalent, 
Uh, you'll see that right here under my root called Aguero Synology. There is a data shared folder right there. And I can go and create folders within there. I can upload documents and then you can fully navigate to it by navigating backslash backslash the IP address or the host name, the fully qualified name, whatever it may be on your Mac, you go to a different area in your finder to go and navigate to your NAS. So that's really the steps. So I mean, we can sort of see how this thing's going on. It's still building, I think. Yeah, still doing its thing. So this will take a bit of time, but that's it. Hopefully you found this helpful. Like, comment below, click on the subscription button and the bell to be kept up to date with everything that is going on in Digital Byte Computing. My name's Emilio. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.